Welcome to the MYS Virtual Hangout. Here's your host, MYS Music Director, Raul Gomez. Andy, welcome to the MYS Virtual Hangout number 67. How are you? I'm great. How are you, bro? It's good to see I'm you. I'm great. Yeah, good awesome. to see you, man. And where in the world are you? Because I didn't think I didn't think the pandemic slowed you down. You seem to just be everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm uh, right now. I'm in Portland, but I um, I uh, yeah, I've been traveling a lot. I was just in New York. Yeah, um, yeah. And this is so, not your first appearance uh, on an MYS virtual hangout because last time we saw you, you dropped in uh, into a hangout with Colin Curry. Oh, and you Sorry. were, I think, in San Francisco. San Francisco you were like yeah. out uh, walking on the, on the outside. Oh yeah, that was yeah, that was good to see you guys. And that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was last summer. Um, it was, and that's when we were doing these hangouts actually live. Because now we pre-tape, and you know, but back then with with Colin, he was calling all the way from from Europe, and it was uh, we had a few folks from the Oregon Symphony also in the chat. Oh, nice. We, we should fun. get Colin to call in for this one. You know, I didn't think of it. He's, he's probably asleep. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> or maybe not. I don't know. He's a night out, too. Or maybe, maybe. not. You're yeah. right. <laughs> You're right. We uh, just had our gala, or the MYS virtual gala. Second year in a row, we have to do a virtual gala. Speaking of Colin Curry, he recorded a quick shout-out wearing his MYS t-shirt uh, for our gala. So it's good to see him then. Um, since we're talking about Colin, let, let me jump in before we go back in time and ask about your story, your upbringing. So you have this relationship with Colin Curry and you have all of these relationships with other percussionists and percussion ensembles and orchestras that you write for. How have these connections and relationships happened over time for you as a composer is this something that you specifically look for or do these things just kind of happen and you get a commission how, how does it work yeah um i think for the most part it just one project uh might influence the next you know like so a lot of a lot of commissions come in through I guess people respond to my music and, and give me a call or an email. And, and by the time I'm working on that, I'm usually behind because <laughs> time is not my friend for some reason. Um, so when, when that happens, that, that, you know, a couple other things come in and, and I, I only do the projects I really am passionate about. So th yes. those are the ones I agree to do. And, um, and I, I just I put my life into it, and then yeah. and then from there, you know, I think people respond to it. Either people hate it or love it, but I think sure. I think the, the the positive influence is like you know like it just it feeds off the next, you know. And, and then I'm very fortunate to have these these uh, collaborations. You know, I think yeah. it's just it, it. I don't know. It's a, it's a very fun experience <laughs> but yeah. but i you know I, I don't think there's a rhyme or reason i just it, it just happens you know and then the next sure. project happens and i'm late for the deadline and <laughs> by the time you know but i, I do want i do want to initiate some projects that's that's my goal in the future i'm trying to set up my life to where i can do that to where i'm not only just going commission to commission like I, sure. there's a lot of passion projects i've been really excited about yeah. um that i i want to want to initiate you know, it's tricky because this is how I make my living too. Sure. So if, sure. I, if I was a, maybe if I were like a full-time professor or something with a lot of stability, I could just do the passion. I mean, but like I said, every project that I commit to, I, I am passionate about those situations, sure. you know, and collaborations. Yeah. Well, I would say that, you know, saying that people respond well to your music is a bit of an understatement because I do want to, uh, um send folks watching go to the description of this youtube video and you'll see a link where you can read 
and this bio because you've gotten all kinds of awards and, and recognitions that are very well deserved um so i i would say that yes people respond well to your music let's go back to south carolina let's go back in time and uh how did little andy get started in music and how did you end up living a uh, bi-coastal life between portland and new york well um i mean i i fell in love with music at an early age like you know like a lot of musicians and um my sister got me into playing drum set like for rock bands and stuff so that's how i started she had like a double kick heavy metal tom and rock star drum kit and um she used to play in, in rock bands a little bit. How old were you at this point? I don't know. I think I was like nine or ten. Eight, eight, yeah. Somewhere between eight and ten. Sure. And she's ten years older. So, yeah, I was probably around eight. Cause she, yeah, eight or nine. You know. Um, and she, she, she also kind of like looked after, after me a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, cause by, yeah. So, it was, uh, so I, I don't know. I looked up to her and, and I wanted to play drums i just i just fell in love with like rhythm and, and drums and stuff you know yeah, sure, and sure. That, that's where i got started and did you know at what point did you know that you're gonna be you know pursuing a career in music at all i think i always knew from that from that point on wow yeah. it, i never thought of it like oh that's gonna be my job <laughs> i sure. just thought like i'm gonna yeah i'm be a musician the rest of my life no, I wasn't good at it neither, <laughs> at all. Oh, you were not? I just liked it so much. Yeah, it was, I was, music was, yeah, and so by the, even by the time I started in middle school, like, in band or whatever, music yeah. was my worst subject, um, as far as, like, talent or natural ability. <laughs> yeah. And when, when did you start taking... I mean, I imagine you started taking individual lessons, right? Private lessons. No, not not till late in high school. I, I couldn't afford lessons or anything. So, wow. Um, okay. We, I just, I just learned in school. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, played along to to songs on the drum set and uh, sure, sure. Hung out with friends, but then I started where I started really honing in on like. Some, some, any type of skills or anything was like when I started doing drum corps because it, it kind of got me out of trouble too during the summers. Sure. Like, um, I, I would go off to this, this drum corps all summer and we'd go on tour. And, and the first time I auditioned, I remember it was 1994. And I was a freshman in high school. I, I couldn't play anything, couldn't read, couldn't play. And um, I went there, and, and uh, they actually laughed at me. It was kind of funny. Um, and I remember practicing every day to the next year, to the next audition. Uh, me and my friend Xavier, um, we, we would we practice for hours after school or during school. We'd cut class and just practice all the time, just drum, because that's all we knew to practice. And, uh, and I came back next year and, and filled it. I mean, I still vengeance. wasn't good. I still wasn't good, but I, I think they remembered. And, and also, I, 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 could, I could, I could hold my, uh, I don't know, I could hold wow. my own. And like, I ended up making that, that drum line in, in 19, 1995. Um, and then for the next six years, I did drum corps. But that's what got me in the, the discipline mode to practice a lot. Um, yeah. and, then, and then I started taking lessons like, my senior year of high school, my, my drumline instructor would give me free lessons because I couldn't afford lessons still. And then I worked up an audition and faked it away in the college. Like, it, I mean, I had great, good grades. And like, I always made straight A's and stuff, except band. Actually, I didn't make straight A's in band. But so in uh, my senior year, I wanted to go to college. Um, I could only apply to University of South Carolina because it was the local. And, yeah. Um, I couldn't afford the application fees or the flights to go try to do other. Sure, sure. Um, so I, I just I worked up like a little marimba solo, and I, I barely got into the music school. <laughs> yeah, and, as, uh, as a performance major. 
It's an undergrad performance. Maybe? Yeah, percussion. I mean, I like because I could like I could work up stuff because I worked hard, but I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't yeah, take yeah. proper lessons till then, till like the last minute, and then um, I got into South Carolina for for music. Um, and wow. then went from there. Yeah, yeah and then yeah. then I started going really crazy in practice. Yeah, started learning how to read pitches and stuff like that in college. So I started really late, kind of. Or I, I, sure, I matured sure. really late in like, <laughs> you know. I am just so fascinated by that first audition when you were 14 that you, you know, they didn't take you in and then you went back and you, you know, you just went to work for a year. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, it, it is that kind of dramatic too. Like it, it it's not like a. It, 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 it sounds, sounds like, like a fairy tale a, thing, but you know, like you see in the movies, they go and like you see movie. the montage and they, yeah, 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 they exactly. like go run up the mountain. So that was, I used to, I used to be inspired by all those, <laughs> those, uh, montages. That's, <laughs> like that's the Rocky exactly montages what you did. And stuff. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> did that with drumming. And, uh, yeah. Cut to the day of the, uh, second audition a year later, right? Just getting ready. Just, here yeah. We yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It was, and that was a life changing experience because, like I said, I was away from my neighborhood on those formative years yeah. um, to get out of trouble, too. So, yeah. all those summers I was gone. And then in school, I, I was working so hard that I, I didn't have time to get in trouble. Yeah. So, when I did drum wow. corps, that kept me disciplined. And then, you know, I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. When in this whole timeline did you start? writing music creating composing when i when i was in high school i would write like snare drum solos and I've, I've published every single thing i've ever written so i even have my high school snare drum duet that i wrote in my senior year of high school i wasn't Whoa. a composer i just wrote sure. for myself yeah and my friends said i wrote that for that guy xavier yeah myself. um and uh yeah it's just like a, a, a little silly rudimental duet for snare drum and uh and then i and then when i graduated college i had a senior recital and so i currently and i wrote for all my friends in a, in a hip-hop dance group at the university of south carolina uh -huh. i wrote all this it's called hypocrisy it's like another kind of silly piece that i wrote for me and my friends but i wasn't a composer sure <laughs> and then, sure well and then i, I moved mean, you, to new york you were yeah. but you didn't see yourself as one Right. Yeah, and, I, and it was like one piece every six years, <laughs> so or sure. five years or something. It wasn't, you know, I was doing it to write something to perform. So yeah. I didn't see my yeah right. So then when I when I got to New York, um, soon after, you know, I went to Trinidad a lot. Then I moved to New York, and I started arranging for steel bands um, in Brooklyn, like hundred piece steel orchestras. Did uh, you say Trinidad? Yeah, I went to train out a lot to play. And How did that happen? That's, I mean, that's... Um, well, my, my mentors in the University of South Carolina, Jim Hall and Chris Lee, Jim Hall was a professor when I was there. They, they were always like, you got to go to train that because they knew I loved pan. And I practiced pan all the time. I was the steel pan guy in college a little bit, you know, like... Um, and, and they said you got to go to Trinidad. It's like, you know, I mean, I knew that they were from Trinidad. I knew all about Calypso and the Soka and the big panorama bands, but I didn't experience that till like 2002. You know, I got to go play in the big bands and that, that energy kind of influenced the way I write and the way I think yeah. about music too and interpret rhythms. And then, and then I moved to New York from there and, and then I, I, I started playing, I played in one of the big bands in New York. And then I started arranging for one with this, uh, this incredible steel pianist, Freddie Harris III. Um, we, we started arranging for this band, Sesame Flyers in Brooklyn. And, and that was kind of like my first real compositional experience because you're writing for somebody else. Even though there were arrangements of soca tunes, so it'd be like arranging a pop tune, but, going, but making a symphony out of like a Beyonce tune or something. Or, or, sure. or, you know what I mean? Like, so we, we did that and... I learned a lot from that. And then from there, you know, after years of that and being in New York, only being in the Caribbean scene, I talked to my friend, Bowser, uh, Bowser Sekai, 
who we, we were roommates at the University of South Carolina, and he was like the composer percussionist. So he, he was at Eastman working on his PhD for composition. I was, I was talking to him one day and I was like, now I want to start writing for other instruments, not just steel pen. And he's like, you know any classical musicians in New York? And I was like, no, not at all. I did, I'd been there for like seven years, didn't know, or I don't know, five years or so, didn't know one classical music musician really. And then um, he was like, you got to go back to school to meet people. You know, so then that's why I decided to go back to school much later in life. I was about yeah. 28, 29 by the time I got back to school. And he, he told me about that program at Manhattan School. It's a um, contemporary performance program. So I worked really hard. And he also told me about Bang and Ken. And I didn't know anything about either. And I just, I, I practiced a lot. And two weeks later, I took an audition. Got in. And th- this for for the uh, for Manhattan School of Music. Yeah, for a contemporary performance degree. It was their first time they were doing that. Okay, is um, that a um like like a master's mm-hmm. or like diploma type? Yeah, it's a master's degree. Yeah. And, um, wow. Yeah, it was crazy. So, I, I let really me ask you this: did, did you find the steel pan in college or before college? Like, did it? Oh, way before. Wait, what? Oh, 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 before undergrad. No, I didn't. I, I just realized a couple of years ago, I was looking through pictures and I went to London in 1995 with the marching band, my high school. And I remembered like seeing a steel pan perform on the streets, yeah. like, like panhandling, you know? And I remember leaving a bag of um, dry bananas. <laughs> when I was uh, like a ninth or tenth, what? yeah, that was like my. I put that in the steel pan case. I really totally remember this, but I didn't remember it till I saw that picture, and I was like, "Oh, that must have been the first time I saw a steel pan." Didn't know what it was, and then when, by the time I got to college, undergrad, I you know I got into steel yeah, pan. Yeah. I didn't take it serious till really after college, though. Sure. Well, and now you you have created this. I don't know if I, if, if it can be called a niche, right? But you, you are now traveling the world playing your compositions with orchestras and with ensembles everywhere sort of you know like beethoven did for his piano concertos type <laughs> deal right yeah i've got a long way to go on at that level but i'm doing it a little bit yeah trying to get yeah, better yeah. at it you know wow well that's all very very cool um and there are videos of you on youtube and I, folks should go just Look up Andy Akiho online. Uh, but there is a video that we're going to share with our viewers. We're going to play about two minutes of a track entitled Pillar 4. What can you share with us about this video and the larger work that it uh, goes with? Yeah, this is... um, this Pillar 4 was originally commissioned like 2013. I wrote it in 2014. And when I was writing that, I, I always had a vision for a larger work. So that's why it's called Pillar 4, because I knew that would be the middle movement of a larger work. It's 11 movements one day. Mm. And then I got a commission from Sandbox Percussion a couple of years later to write the whole thing, uh, nice. to write the other yeah. 10 movements. And that's what I'm working on right now. I've got about five minutes left of about an 80-minute piece. And Pillar 4 is the middle movement of all of those and that Very sandbox nice. i think you're showing the sandbox video right it was yeah. originally commissioned by time travelers so that was a different video but um got it sandbox is the new one yeah very nice okay so let's uh, let's watch uh about a couple of minutes of that and then we'll be right back awesome thanks
Okay, so that, that was about two minutes of this video, which is closer to eight minutes, but then this belongs in the middle of an evening length work. Did you say 80 minutes total? Yeah, it's about 75 to 80 minutes. It's just a okay. full concert, writing a full concert for Sandbox. Okay, and how did the pandemic Im impact any of the timing of this project or, or how it's conceived? Yeah, it was supposed to be premiered last year, last April, 2020, because the pandemic hit and delayed that a little bit and also delayed my writing process a little bit. So I was able to work more on the movements that weren't finished. Mm. And um, I got to spend more time on it. Maybe more behind on future projects, but I think it makes this a little bit tighter work. And, and I also got to work with Sandbox more. We did some residencies where we kind of set up our own pod. And it was super safe. And, yeah. and this was in, where are they based? They're based in Brooklyn. They're in yeah. Brooklyn. Okay. But we, would, we would set up kind of residencies. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say where the residencies were. Because sure. we kind of, <laughs> we set it up as like a pod. Like we all got tested make sure we're safe. Took some yeah, yeah. days to kind of quarantine when I got out there and yeah, then yeah. went off and did a couple of residencies. I know one that a lot of say is um, uh, PS21, it's up in Chatham, New York. Okay. And, uh, another one. Yeah. And then uh, when can we, your audiences, work, when and how can we experience this performance when it's put out into the world? Well, we're going to release it, the album. And that's, that's another thing with the pandemic. So it's not going to be performed. The, the premiere is not going to be live first. It's going to be released digitally. So we're getting 11 different directors to do 11 different music videos. Uh, the combination of choreography, actors, uh, animation, lights, all kinds of stuff. Everybody's doing something a little bit different. And we're going to release those hopefully starting in June, about a week apart. And then we're going to release the whole thing August 6th with the album. Um, wow. And then they're going to perform it live near the end of the year, I believe. And I, I think that's going to be in Seattle. Oh, in Seattle. Okay. So we, we could go out there and yeah, that might experience be the this person. Yeah, they were wow. going to do it for Chamber Music Northwest, but I think with the pandemic and limited wow. concerts and seating, that, that's not going to be possible. But hopefully in the future, they'll, they'll do it. On our home turf <laughs> but um, wow yeah uh, let me ask you about these music videos that are going to be released starting in june with 11 different directors that sounds amazing are you having any kind of uh obviously besides the music creative input into those videos i mean definitely i think we're all we're all kind of we all kind of have a little bit of input you know um it's a big project. There's a lot of moving parts. So it's That's so cool. That sounds right so now. cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, yeah. Uh, okay. Just want to save it for the, for sure, the, yeah. the I check it wait. out. Cause I'm not good at talking about it, but it's, it's there. I mean, it's, it's anything from thinking of the whole big macro structure from this is going to be this palindromic situation where, you know, like okay. dance movements, animation movements, Pillar four is going to be a narrative movement, you know, uh, performance movements. And on top oh, of that, we're, yeah. yeah, there's, um, on top of that, there's going to be a whole nother movie made and the music to this as well. Well, I, so look out for that too. <laughs> you just say you're not good at talking about it, but you just got me so excited about it. Well, I that think sounds when like you, such when a cool When you hear Sandbox do this and, and the, the crew we have, on board, I think it's so a lot more exciting than me talking about it. <laughs> but um, very, they, they're just doing so much, cool. and I'm I'm grateful to be a part of this big project. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. not just about writing the music. You know? Wow, very very cool. I cannot wait, and I hope I can go to that Seattle show. I, I, oh, you have to. I yeah, it's just right up the street. Yeah. 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 Okay. Wow. Very nice, Andy. Um, we're starting to sort of run out of time so i want there's a, a segment that i want to make sure that we do with you called sound advice and uh my question to you is the following if you could travel back in time and give yourself advice when you were in 
say high school, then what would that advice be? And this can be about music, it can be about life, it can be about anything. Well, if I'm thinking in terms of like what I would have done different, I'm not sure I, I would have done anything different. Because I, I think living the experiences, all the mistakes too, and the, the, the things that were good, working hard or, or wasting time or whatever you do as a kid and a teenager, um, you have to live all of that so you can tell that story when you create down the line. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, all this, even, even the things I might regret in the back of my mind or, or bad memories, that's all part of who I am. Um, mm -hmm. So if I would give advice to others, if they're in that stage right now or will be in that stage one day, <laughs> I think I would say, I mean, really just hold, be yourself and like that's really trite but really just know who you are and be confident with that and live that life and don't care what other people think <laughs> but you know find your passion too and do that whether it's your job or just a hobby or whatever it is i think you have to just live life to the fullest you don't know when that ends <laughs> so you might as well live every day like it's 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 very important you know and I don't know. I don't want to get too deep on it, but you know, I, I think it's it's important to find who we are and be ourselves and live those experiences to the fullest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love that. I think that is excellent advice. Yeah, there's a, there's an element of trust, right, that goes into it. Sort of like trust your journey in a way. Yeah, and your, your gut. Yeah. You, you, I mean, you have to. You have to make mistakes as long as they're not fatal mistakes, obviously, but you have to learn like that. You know, I think, um, I mean, yes, I'm very fortunate because it, it went the right way. <laughs> like I made a lot of decisions that could have literally been beyond life threatening, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you have to, you have to go those paths, but you have to, um, you have to be confident in where you're going and, you know, be safe and smart about it. You know, and, and but but live live life, travel. Don't yes. take don't take uh, school and everything too serious. You want to do well, but it's not everything. It's more about you, you know. Obviously, you learn more through experiences than through classroom. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, Andy. Thank you so much for taking time to uh, be at the MBS virtual hangout. It's great chatting with you. I hope that uh, we can all see you in person soon, either visiting MYS or at a live performance or maybe having a cup of coffee or something. We love that. Thank you, Ron. It's, it, it's, so, it's a pleasure talking with you. Thanks, thanks so man. much. T take care, awesome. Andy. You too. Okay. Thank you so much.